Hello and welcome back to the Hard West. We are playing scenario number two and we're on the trail of Solomon who is trying to lift the secret of a very ravenous curse. And we've left our hero at the telegraph station where he delved deeper into his research of what could be behind the curse. Um, and that's exactly where we're going to start today's session. Uh, so, the endeavor took several days and was endlessly frustrating. Solomon considered walking away at many points. None of the letters from the na neighboring states mentioned anything about the plague. Solomon felt he was missing something important. He was exhausted but still carried on reading far into the night. And one of these evenings should probably have been a warning for him because we're going to face some opposition. We're decked up, we have um, already prepared everything. Solomon is pretty ready, with the exception of his uh, vertigo curse. And here we go. Solomon found himself in a maze of trains and stations. The scattered notes he'd found rearranged themselves to a giant telegraph hub. The Pinkertons stared at him with hollow eyes, listless and lethargic. When he finally heard Trimmer Cliff's voice telling him to find his answers, Delir realized he was dreaming. Gather all notes in the required number of turns. So we do have 20 turns to gather a number of notes. That's interesting. It's the first time um, that we have a time limit on anything. Have Solomon collect all of the notes. So Solomon's the guy that's going to collect most of the notes. Interestingly enough, he can be invisible at times. So we need to play a bit more aggressive this time around but that's okay if we are looking at the train station in general uh, my mantra is not getting flanked so we might want to start taking up a line here behind this cart and here and here it's a bit tricky because this house here offers a way to get in and flank us but other than that, if we could, if we can make it up to this house and then even take this house, we should have a pretty solid take on the whole stage. Of course, we don't know how many enemies are going to be there, so let's take all of that with a grain of carefulness, uh, carefulness, uh, carefulness. Um, got a first stock here. I don't know if we want to I don't know if we want to waste our golden bullet already. I'm going to see about this. There is an option to take a shot here and hit this guy. I think we can't ricochet two here. No, it's not going to make it. And I think we also can't directly ricochet to this place. No. There are no ways to bounce off the ricochet. That's unfortunate. Okay, so maybe we, we will need to use the golden bullet. Not sure yet. I don't want to position myself here because that means we can and probably will be flanked from this side. So might as well move up to here and see what we can do from here. Solomon on the other side we need him to move as far as possible. So 
Unless we want to give up this position, which I'm not willing to give up. I actually need to kill this guy. Fortunately, the golden bullet is down now. Oh, we can... We hear that someone's inside. That's a bummer. Well, this someone could move out of the door, but that would probably be too... Uh, that would be too much, uh, too much movement. That someone will not move out of here because uh, we block that way. So it's most likely that we can execute him or her through the window. Let's end the turn here. All right. Persons is going to move up. And we can slowly but surely... I mean, this here is still a very dangerous spot because we don't know if there's someone in this house. So I might as well just move here. I think that was a good idea. And I think this position here was a bit too overambitious, so we're reloading and now ta uh, taking our, our line up to this point. Yeah, that, it's too dangerous to just move Sol Solomon to the front like this here would mean they're coming out of the door. It's just not worth it. There is no door out here and there is a high likelihood that no one will move to here. So we can move Solomon up to here. This is at least half cover against her and we might be able to actually execute her. Oh, she was lucky. Good. We can flank this position. Super dangerous to leave all of that here uncovered, uh, unguarded. So maybe we'll just just. Uh, leave him here for now. Another option could be to move here, ricochet shot, and take her down. Well, that's probably not necessary. We have enough firepower. There we go. Let's move on further. Again, there is a door here. Might uh, They might open it. This is elsewhere is a pretty safe spot, um, just in terms of cover. So Solomon moves up. And I'm still very unhappy with all of this territory uh, being left un. Um, unprotected. Moving up here is a good idea in order to cover this piece, but it makes you vulnerable against all of uh, these openings. So it, as much as it sucks, I think we just need to uh, leave the sniper there for a moment. Super dangerous, by the way. Uh, to, to move around here. It's very easy uh, to get flanked. Hundreds of angles to actually get flanked. You, can, you can't stand here because you can get flanked. Like this is one of the few positions that you can take. 
so I suggest we're first and foremost making a hard push to here. Opening the door. Okay, good. Again, this here would be not a good position to be at because we could, could be flanked from here. Very bad uh, angles for us. Let's stay in cover, take a reload, and next turn we're going to, uh, to collect the documents. Moving up with the sniper. I knew we would find someone. I knew it. So we got this hallway covered. And the sniper is covering a lot of terrain at the moment. So we're slowly uh, taking the first document, 17 turns. Think we're going to speed up as soon as we got, uh, as soon as we can kill more. So let's take a peek into. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know how that happened, but we're now fighting demons. So gosh. Solomon definitely can't enter because that's a fully covered spot. So I guess what we're doing is we're trying to at least we're trying to at least damage him somewhat and then finish him. Okay, we got two uh, two damage on him. That's good enough because we are now trying to golden bullet him. Had one more golden bullet left. Just asking myself if we were to stand here, we could flank him, and that's nice. But we could be flanked as well. well. That's a bit of an issue. Moving to here is probably too risky. So what I am going to do is moving back into full cover. And we're reloading here. It's just a better play. Yeah, that was absolutely the right decision. Elsewise, this guy could have uh, could have hit us. Oh, okay, we can't even see these dudes. That indeed is interesting. Uh, can we ricochet off of something? Trying to deliver the bullet. Yeah, but it seems to not be working as intended.
That's half cover. This here is full cover, but these guys could move up to the window. So, I am thinking. This here is not far enough in order to see them. The stones are in the way. Moving into a half cover spot to see both of them. And we're not having enough luck. That is unfortunate. I should have watched his luck because I wanted to move here, then scream for both and basically finish them by moving into full cover. We can we could try to hit him, but that would barely scratch him. Not sure if that's a good idea or if we s try to reload instead. I mean it's one damage, but he will get some luck back in return. Let's try it anyways. Okay, we missed. That's fine. clear to Delir now. The madness existed only within this region. Shroomercliff's voice urged him to find more clues. Okay, again we need to be careful here. Moving anywhere close to this area might discover more enemies also. That's a very flankable area. Putting in ourselves into half cover. Not seeing any, uh, not having any line of sight to him so far. And we also have no indication that there are more enemies so far. Hmm. Again, I would want to play this carefully. Moving inside of this house. Taking off even more luck. And getting into cover. Alright, fair enough. We're having 13 more turns. That's a really poor position to uh, to assault. Like I would want to go here, but at the same time I'm very afraid that there is like a huge opening, and this guy is just holding his ground, I guess. Putting ourselves in full cover.
if we were to position ourselves here, that would mean we are not being flanked. So might as well try that. Okay, so we can come up on him during the next turn. We don't have enough luck for the golden bullet. That's why we could finish him right now. Just trying to get some ground with Solomon because we're I'm I'm worried about the 13 turns. We still got two more documents to catch. This guy puts up a hell of a fight, but I think his uh, luck ran out like right now. Person here can finish him. Like he didn't do much, but uh, still his positioning was pretty, pretty good. to sneak in. Could go all the way up to here. Let me check if this is clear first and foremost. Well, look at that. Sometimes you're opening a door and right behind it you see a demon. Sometimes you notice that your original position might be not as well positioned as you would have wished. Solomon reloads. We don't have, we really don't have uh, the uh, the option to use any um, any ricochet shot because our luck is down to 17. So might as well just shoot that guy. That is so annoying. So right there, uh, just one second, uh, right there, um, that's a bummer in this game. So let me talk a bit about the reaction shots, right? So if you walk into the five feet zone of someone else to get a flank on him, the enemies will reaction shot on you. I already uh, realized this, it happened to us, and basically that was how scenario one was killed. So the argumentation of the developer why your guys shouldn't have it is because the AI is programmed never to run through that zone, which this year just clearly showed that this, it's not the case. Um, instead, the AI had uh, had just decided to get into our bag and ambush us. With a reaction shot, what would have happened is we would have taken this shot and the guy would have been dead. I'm not mad, I'm just saying if you make design, uh, design decisions, it's fair, right? it's no problem, and uh, if the game it's just not incentivizing like overwatch behavior for you guys that's all okay but i would prefer not to choose like a lame excuse um, and just say you did not want players to have that ability i think that's more honest than telling that the ai wouldn't do it Okay, we still got two more bad guys coming up. Okay. 
And I guess we do have a pretty decent crossfire on them. Move in here. That's one down. Solomon unfortunately can't move anywhere close. Hmm, that's that's too bad. up and noticing that there are more enemies we're down to 10 turns I don't know if there is another enemy here and it would be too dangerous just to rush in so we need to take our time. And in this case, I think it means reloading and just taking a shot. Slowly wiggling him down. Moving up, realizing that that's a really bad position, unless, unless we can kill this guy. Oh, we're out of ammunition, that's fine. Reload. And let's shoot him. Give me a second, just making sure that we maximize our um, our efficiency with the luck. Yeah, we can't use the ricochet. It would be nice to ricochet over here and then kill him, but that's not the case, so... Yet another golden bullet. Thank you for the 150 luck. That's great. Good. This gives us ample time to move up and make sure that no one's like flanking from up here. Alright, so we have eight turns left, which I think is still going to be enough time to finish this. We need to get our our uh, front line back. So this here is the new line, and we're trying to defend into this direction. If we somehow just spotted this guy out. Oh, we did. Gotcha. Ah, but we're out of ammunition. 
<laughs> That's a bummer. Gosh. So this here will not be enough to kill him. I like the severe injury. And it reminds me to reload more often. Some of the weapons I'm not watching the ammunition well enough. Some turns could have been used just to reload. Oh gosh, we... That was a massive shot. I'm not sure if we want to stay in the open. But we don't have a ricochet and that's the problem. Can't reach this target here. But as always, I mean, we, we just don't want to stand in an exposed position. Might as well just move around here and take a, take a flanking position. So this guy is completely out of ammunition. Let's reload and get revenge. There we go. Asylum patients relapse after returning home. The solemn voice intoned that there were too many unknowns. All right, there we go. I knew there were some more. Let's move in. I think we're slowly but surely approaching the point where all of the enemies are being revealed. That guy is in full cover. But he just gave us enough um, luck to use our golden bullet. Thank you. I absolutely love the sniper. He's pretty... Uh, the, the cards that we've given him are pretty good. Okay, I suppose we're almost done. Just for the sake of 
covering all of the different angles. Let's move there. The old man had said that a comet appeared the night the madness started. Realization thrilled through him. Delir was ready to make his conclusions. He knew that certain physical substances like mercury could cause madness. If that were true, then the plague could have a physical source. What if the comet had become a meteor? Could that be the cause of all this? Ooh. The maze receded from view. Trumercliff's voice faded, distant, but satisfied. Flash of light and the excited shouting woke Solomon, uh, Solomon from the nightmare. It took him a moment to regain his bargaining. One of the persons shouted they discovered a cache of gold under the station floor. Solomon, however, could think of nothing but the source of madness. He was now convinced that the meteor had crashed somewhere in these lands. He needed to find out where, but first he would need to make sure that the right tools are in his workshop. Solomon didn't get any rest at night. The nightmares he had uh, at the telegraph station weighted heavy on his mind. He worried he might have taken the first step towards madness. So we got a couple of mines here. Solomon determined the mine was still rich. Um, it had been abandoned after the madmen had damaged the support beams. Some gold veins remained exposed. Solomon then fixed the elevator and the drill. Unfortunately, the mine collapsed under, after a handful of transports. Too bad. A damaged crane once transported the platform up and down the shaft. It appeared that the machine has failed while the miner Ericsson was riding up with a pan full of gold nuggets. He would have been killed instantly. With four assorted parts, Solomon fixed it. The crane was soon um, restored and working under Solomon's retrieved the gold. He left the crane intact so it could be used once the madness had been banished from the land. Got ourselves 400 cash. That's not bad. Solomon saw a glimmer of light at the bottom of the shaft. Perhaps a madman had thrown his possessions down the hole. Um, we're building a simple ladder. Solomon built a rudimentary ladder that allowed him to safely retrieve the valuables from the bottom of the shaft. Unfortunately, it wasn't durable enough to last beyond the adventures. And we got ourselves another 75 gold. I think... Yeah, let's do the workshop first, and then we see which kind of uh, which kind of weapons we would need. Solomon locked himself into the workshop for an entire day. He built a mining drill to extract the meteor from the crater. He also built an insanity gorge, so whatever was visited in the location, he could observe in the gorge and check the, the area of madness level. He was positive he would find higher results near the crater. It was Solomon's Delaire's workshop, completely renovated and ready to use. Um, we're missing the revealer. So, where's the revealer? According to the Insanity Gorge, the level of madness in the Psychosphere was four uh, Trumor Cliffs, too low. The nearer impact of the crater, the higher the madness level should rise. Let's start with the... Oh, nice. We got this little uh, Truma Cliff insanity level now. I like it. So we're doing the blueprint. And Solomon invented uh, the piercing ammo and petrifying bolt. So we're done now with all of these inventions. Let's go to gunsmithery. And we are running out of blueprints. So... Let's take a look what kind of items we can um, actually buy. So we had the piercing ammunition. 
Experimental ammunition developed during the Pioneer Ballistic Test, plus one damage. Well, that's not bad, I like the plus one damage. Um, it allows us to, to sometimes one-shot enemies that have five hit points. So maybe we should get it. Let's see what else is available. S for the gunsmith. I mean, there are a couple of generally interesting guns here. First of all, we can buy blueprints for 80. Um, yes, thank you. And there are a lot of guns which have 5 damage over 4. For instance, the pepper box. And I think we're taking one Remy Bo uh, Borgen rifle because one of the Stooges only had like really, really bad equipment. Yeah, this guy had a Navy uh, gun and the Derringer. So we're taking the Derringer out and we're buying the rifle instead. Again, also the three damage Derringer. That's just not good. We're taking a pepper box instead, which is much better. As for Solomon, six shooter and Western rifle. I think he's fine with a Western rifle. He could trade the six shooter for a, for a quarter pounder pistol. The 6 damage are really not that bad. Also damage versus half cover with 3 damage is pretty okay. It's only one shot though, so... That should give us... A lot of um, a lot of money. That's just the offer. Confirm and trade. So Solomon takes the quarter pistol, and we're giving the other Stooges more weapons to play with. We got a couple new cards. Let's see what we're dealing with. So well, we got the King of Hearts, track wounded enemies. And we got the Joker plus. We got ourselves a Jack for defense and dodge. You know what? I mean, let's redo the builds real quick. Just so we uh, do not follow the same patterns over and over. I like the sniper with uh, having the ricochet shot and the, uh, and the golden bullet. That's just a very good combination. Plus, uh, pair gives him plus four movement, which is not bad. Like, by the way, is this our sniper? I think the green guy was our sniper. I might be mistaken though. He has a spine fracture, minus four movement and maximum hit points. Why exactly are we giving him the sniper? That's just dumb. With aim 50, that's not even a clever idea. Should give it to aim 80, and this guy, even with 70 aim, that's fine. 
He has 150 luck. That's good. Let us give him the Remington. Okay. That way I'm also looking at ammunition. This guy has 8 ammunition overall. This guy here has 11. I'm trying to give them uh, weapons that have a lot of ammunition so they, uh, that we can keep on moving. Um, and we don't need to look back all the time. Okay, back to the cards. Our sniper apparently is this gentleman here. Good. Very good. Thank you. Now I am inclined to just try out what this uh, what this straight flush here is about to uh, offer. That's one HP, never able to die. Uh, if there is a chance to dodge the bullet, you will. Um, two bonus movement and the shriek ability. And if we're taking the king in here, oh wow, straight flush plus one damage plus one maximum HP. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. He's now at 10 hit points, has a very decent uh, defense, um, and we can shriek with Solomon, which is nice. So let's keep that on him. As for the others, I like to combine these uh, three here. Regenerates when not in direct sunlight, has increased movement and can be invisible, and senses enemies. I really appreciate this. So who has a lot of movement? So we're putting the cards on C person because he has some somewhat decent movement. And in order to increase the movement even more, we're giving him a pair. Track wounded enemies. I think that's fine. And we could give our um, our sniper the bonus to luck. Ten luck is good. We, he needs all the luck that he could get and every uh, 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 crit he scores or every hit he scores cripples the enemy is even better so we got a lot of plus four movement from hand bonuses and solomon has probably the best hand bonus by far also additional hit points from the bulletproof vest he has 17 defense which is awesome it means that it, there's almost 20 deduction from every shot that he takes like he's really a tank last but not least won't mention let's see what kind of barter we can take here Um, I mean, I like that idea about uh, having two extra damage. Um, that's not bad. The minus 24 maximum luck is a bit of a turn off, to be honest. But two extra damage isn't really bad. It's actually quite good. Yeah, but I, our sniper needs uh, the luck in order to hit with his golden shot. Okay, let's take a look. We're getting closer. The, Trump, uh, the, the insanity meter gets higher. Solomon came to the native village. The people here were uh, as eccentric but closer to insanity than most. They also got some nice trinkets. Plus 5 defense is interesting. Plus, 20, uh, plus 5 aim is interesting. One maximum hit point. Some nice trinkets, but we're I think we're okay on trinkets. So 
Solomon stumbled upon an ab abandoned campsite besides ext extinguished fire pits. Uh, he found Trumber Cliff's notes. They made little sense to him presented, uh, presently, but he thought they might prove useful later. One of the notebook uh, was entitled My Rival Inventions and contains slanderous text uh, ridiculing other inventions such as Tim Russell, uh, Christopher Wilson and Solomon Delea. Uh, amid mocking comments about his mix mistakes, Solomon found extensive uh, deliberation in the senselessness of his past research. Uh, Solomon decides to keep the notebook. It would motivate him to scientific percept, uh, per uh, perfection. With the notebook in his pocket, he never forgot his past errors. Uh, though the madness increased, with it came scientific greatness. According to the Insanity Gorge, the level here was only four uh, trauma cliffs too low. Solomon misheard things uh, and experienced hallucinations had madness come for him. Then in a fit of raw inspiration he created another blueprint. Great, we got another blueprint. The middle-aged man with lips uh, soon together ran... Oh! With lips soon together ran a pharmacy in the middle of nowhere. Though he never spoke a word and apparently also didn't need to eat, he seemed rational and was eager to strike a bargain. Uh-huh. Well. Well. We got a lot of stimulants here, but I really don't see much need to buy any of those. Maybe a healing elixir, because we've used one. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Another trading post. According to the Insanity Gorge, the level of uh, Psychosphere was six trauma cliffs too low. The Indian trading post was a modest hut made out of raw planks. And everyone's trading the same shit. Well, this one here is interesting. Volcano Pistol. Because we're looking at five base damage. Well, that's pretty good. And a lot of ammunition. That's good as well. I like the idea of six damage for close-up shots with a sword, uh, sort of shotgun uh, also. So, five damage. I think that's a perfect time to get uh, rid of uh, the deadly daring arm. And finally, equip the last uh, weapon for the stooge here. Thinking about it, since he's the silent one, we might want to give him the six damage uh, gun, just in case he needs to sneak up somewhere. He has a five damage gun with a lot of ammunition, and Solomon can really take the five damage um, uh, volcano pistol as his standard, standard gun. Giant clock. Oh, trauma cliffs uh, uh, um, raised to 12. Solomon met J.M. Hobby, an engineer who, who had developed what was called the world's clock. The device counted uh, the time remaining until doomsday. Solomon asked about the clock's detail. Um, seeing the dedication of the watchmaker, decided it was uh, his duty in the inventory and help with the construction. We don't have enough assorted parts unfortunately but we can buy some more and we can buy another blueprint you know i haven't looked for the assorted parts to be honest uh, there's another blueprint um, there's unfortunately no further blueprint. I was just wondering it seems we um, 
Oh, Solomon gave the natives some uh, mechanics and shared his gunsmithing exper uh, ex uh, expertise, earning 50. I think that's fine. We bought the parts for much less than that. Solomon came to the native village. Uh, the people were eccentric. Okay, he needs gunsmithing breakthrough 3. That's fine. Because we got the blueprints. And believe it or not, gunsmithery was anyways what I wanted to research next. So we got the protector ring revolver. And we got the harmonica gun. I know that from the first scenario already. And we researched the chain rifle and the duckfoot pistol. Probably should have gone for gunsmithery right away. Then there is the Mammoth Rifle. That was the one that deals 8 damage, I think. And we're missing one last blueprint. Gosh, I I'm, now I'm... I'm interested to, to get to work... Uh, to Gunsmithery 5. Do we have another blueprint here? We got so many assorted parts. Look at the guns. The Duckfold pistol. Interesting. I'm not sure if that's really efficient, but here we go. Four high caliber barrels arranged like a fan for maximum mayhem. Six damage and a lot of ammunition. Revolver rifle. I don't see how that's really good. Allows two, oh, allows two shots per turn. Quick reload. Hmm. Well, I guess for stationary targets, that's good. The elephant rifle is a bit better than the one that we're currently having. Uh, the chain rifle. I mean, with the exception of the duck fold pistol, maybe, and the elephant rifle for our sniper, I'm not even seeing how this is how these inventions are super good. The current weapons that we that we bought, in my perspective, are better. Let's see if we can get a last um, a last blueprint somewhere. A uh, couple of assorted parts, but that's about it. Again, no blueprint. Too bad. So we're sharing um, our expertise and gained 50 gold. And I think over here at the clockmaker we could help him to assemble the clock. The watchmaster needed parts and the help of a master engineer. Solomon joined uh, to create forces and uh, created an extraordinary clock. Uh, the Gargantian construction towered above them, measuring entropy in the air, while the indicator inevitably moved towards point zero. The time is uh, predicted that the world would end. As a token of thanks, Hobby uh, presented Solomon with a miniature version of the masterpiece. The device was functional and could be useful in combat. Um, we received the Doomsday Watch. <laughs> Plus two damage. All right. Well, I think that's so good that I'm even willing to give up the plus 50 luck. Because plus two damage on the weapon uh, means we're netting a lot of damage. 
And I'm not sure if the plus two damage also works if you're if you're shooting against target at full cover or half cover. Like plus two damage now would mean even dam uh, targets at full cover would receive uh, four damage. That would be awesome. All right, let's look at the sniper real quick. So... That was a reasonably cheap purchase. We're missing one more gun level, but I guess it is what it is. We'll keep the elephant rifle here. And that means we would deal seven damage against targets outside of cover or in half cover. According to the Insanity Gorge, the level of madness was 14 Trumor Cliffs. Musky Swamp was the last place where Tumakif has been seen before vanishing. Curious about the fate, Solomon searched the area, finding a message carved in a tree. I'm at the edge of my sanity. The source must, must be closed now. Head north. Uh, there you... We could have used two Ginseng, which I'm not sure I think uh, this guy had. The Fate Trader. Didn't he have all of the Ginseng? No, I must have been wrong. Maybe this gentleman over here. I'm pretty sure I saw Ginseng. It wasn't the gunsmith. Maybe the Indians had it. Yeah, here we go, Ginseng. Two. Solomon shoot the ginseng to improve his eyesight and thoroughly search the swamp. Solomon did a thorough uh, excavation and searching uh, for a body. While he didn't find his fellow inventor's corpse, um, his ginseng and ha enchanted eyes uh, did notice a tube bearing tumor cliffs and signet contained a blueprint for a device. Ooh. Guess who is getting back to the laboratory and is getting... Gunsmithery 5 now. Well, there you go. Revolver shotgun. That sounds great. So, shotgun revolver, 5 damage, 18 ammunition, and a cone shot. Um, yeah, that is revolving revolver, 48 ammunition, what the heck? Like, that's not even a real weapon, look at it. I mean, you're done with, uh, with, uh, with one set of bullets and it keeps rotating and rotating. can uh, also fan. I can see how this is going to be used. Like you just fan on and on and on. But in all seriousness, I think the revolver isn't too bad. Matter of fact, I think it's much better than most of the other weapons. Um, the shotgun revolver Close action. We could use one, I suppose. Yeah, I think we'll take one and still got some money left over. So 
So he was the guy sneaking, which means we, we are, instead of giving him a quarter pounder pistol, we're now giving him the shotgun revolver. I like it. Oh gosh, we have so much more. Solomon tried to blame his allies, but hateful thoughts were becoming stronger and stronger. He was becoming convinced that the protector and persons had conspired against him. That night, after waking up from a nightmare, he was consumed with ideas for another new blueprint. And we're now getting delusions and psychosis. The crowd of people watched intensively as two men fought to death using knives. The crowd was cheering and the sand was soaked with blood. A man in a top hat commanded the fight in a booming voice. Talking to the announcer. Solomon approached the announcer who said his name was Daniel Mulgord Anderson. Uh, he was an entrepreneur who had found a way to profit from the plague by the way of this circus of blood. Um, he challenged Solo uh, Solomon to a waiter, one of his men against one of uh, the persons. Um, if the man won, Solomon would receive 50. Solomon is not a gambler. According to the insanity level, the psycho fear is 13, okay. The fort showed evidence of a terrible fire. Some of the walls were collapsed. The rest was a rickery mess uh, of wood and iron. Charred bodies splashed at the floor. At one of the edges, the scored buildings that looked like an armory. The site was uh, profoundly insecure. Well, let's search it. Solomon acquired some useful parts, but macabre images plagued his minds for weeks. So we are now at 15 Truma Cliffs. A pile of dead bodies spotting sheriff's uh, deputies' badges lay in the field. Each also carried a letter instructing him to kill any criminals he found in the name of the master. The letter was signed by Sheriff Turner. There were no signs of any victims other than the deputies. We're searching the whole body, uh, whole battleground. In addition to the weaponaries and parts, Solomon found a bag filled with chemicals. His mind was haunted by the thought of the deputies murdering one another for a long time afterwards. Uh, so we found assorted parts, a blueprint, a shotgun, a volcano pistol, which isn't bad, I like the Volcano Pistols. They're actually quite decent. A bit better than uh, these Navy guns. Yeah, and a gas bomb, okay, fair enough. 16 Truma Cliffs. Solomon came into a place that didn't seem to fit the broken lens. Gorgeous fruits and trees filled the orchards. Craters of fresh produce lay in ease of rich, seemingly invited anyone to taste their sweetness. Could it be real? Solomon dismissed it as mirage. Solomon never returned there and never learned whether his suspicion has been correct. Well, he's a careful man. The old hut stank of uh, feces and pain. It was inhabited by Ernesto Ritola, an insane painter who had become considered a genius. He, uh, his admirers said uh, Ritola's incomprehensible patterns hid untold secrets and obscure meaning. So only a mind clouded by madness could understand the paintings. However, a healthy intellect would simply plunge into insanity. Well. Uh, we decided to see it for himself. After a short commentary of the painting, Solomon could feel his mental stability fading away. He ran from the hut. Solomon found incredible beauty in Rita Stoller's work. In fact, they inspired him to create an entire original blueprint. Gosh, uh, we can now even research uh, the third option which is chemistry so 
we got uh, the medical bag and we got the stimulant and we're out of blueprints This area was reading 18 to 20 Trumer cliffs. In the distance, he noticed a large crater. An old seer was said to inhabit this small redwood house. Through an open door, Solomon could see a two foot glass sphere in the middle of the room. Mr. Persons advised Solomon's against taking, uh, talking to the seer. He had heard he was manipulative, madman, uh, that conversations with him only sent people deeper into insanity. Papa have uh, seer to locate it, uh, Solomon then indicated uh, he should sit beside the glass spear. And we accepted. Solomon's uh, conversions with Papa have veered into topic from topic. The seer spoke chaotically about ter a terrible future, along with an inspiring story of fate and madness. The experience left Solomon profoundly energized. And we got the card King of Clubs. The ranch appeared to be ab abandoned. Strange smell came from the barn. Solomon uh, searched the barn. The barn contained nearly 50 bodies. They appeared to have committed suicide together, slicing their wrists. Uh, through both stench and the scene were extreme to uh, a growing discomfort. The inventor found uh, to become used to those things. Some, sometimes he just felt overlooked forward to them. Solomon searched the bodies and recovered quite a few valuables. Okay, we got tobacco, dose of opium, snuff, eagle elixir, and stimulants. Well, we got a lot of drugs, so that's for sure. So let's improve hit points and mobility. That's oh, okay. This here improves aim and maximum hit points. You know, we could rather give him a healing elixir. That's fine. And this here improves aim. Most of the stuff. I'm not convinced that you really need equipment in this game. Like, it feels you only need weapons and a trinket. I might be wrong. But that's my take on it so far. So, we got the king. Ability Terror, nearby enemies panic. I like it. I like it a lot. So just thinking about how we want to play with that ability. Um, We could give a pair of kings over, right? And actually make it a triple. Plus 30 luck. A lot of side bonus, track wounded enemies, sense enemies. He's kind of uh, the, uh, the guy that senses them all out. We have a pair um, here, a pair here, and yeah, I mean these here are are not giving card bonuses, but the movement and the extra uh, shadow cloak and shadow self that's pretty helpful. I think the setup is okay, um, and I guess we're 
on to the last uh, mission. Solomon's paranoia deepened. It seemed the enemy lurked in every corner and Solomon struggled to convince himself there was nothing to fear. Still, he feared everything. Random thoughts attacked his mind, consciousness uh, into concept for another blueprint. Crater was difficult to notice as it blended into the near seamless, seemingly, uh, seamlessly into the canyon walls. Um, and only a small portion protruded from the rock bed. Everything around it had been destroyed by a shockwave. Okay, there is one more uh, fight to go. And I think we're, we will um, call the episode off here. Uh, we are going to rejoin exactly at that stage with the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up and write a comment down below.